For those of you that are holding out on Arduino, what are you waiting for? If you're uncomfortable with it, I'm going to make you warm and fuzzy so you won't have to worry about blowing things up or having some blue smoke or making mistakes with it because it's easy. And I'm going to tell you about what Arduino is right here. And it's not something that you need to be afraid of. That's for sure. Arduino is a number of devices, such as the Uno, Mega, Nano. You may have recognized those names. And it's also software. It's comprised of the hardware, the IDE, and the software. I already told you about the hardware. The IDE is an integrated development environment. That's just like the, the sketch pad right here. And the software is the sketches, which you write down on the sketch pad. And most of the sketches have already been written. So you don't have to worry about writing code or anything like that. The hardware is open source and the software is open source. So it can be copied by any manufactured and the software can be copied by any individual. So that's why there are so many different brands of Uno's, Revision 3's, the Megas, the Nanos, and everything else. And there are thousands and thousands of pieces of software that you could use. All you have to do is put it in your put it in your IDE, load it onto your Arduino, and you're ready to go. So let me show you a few things about an Arduino Uno. We'll start off with that one right there to, just to make it easy. Oh, and by the way, these trains running behind me, they're running off of the Arduino, our Arduino Mega to be exact. You're looking at a Genuino Arduino Uno. The heart of every Arduino is the Atmega 328P microcontroller. This does all the work for the Arduino and you don't have to worry about anything about it because that's taken care of in the software and the pins that you see lining both sides of the Arduino. The software is based on the programming language C and C++, but you don't have to worry about that either because Arduino takes care of all the work for you in the new programming language created by Arduino. They made it simple for everyone. In fact, it was originally introduced for children to teach them electronics and programming the easiest way possible. So you see, there's no excuse for you to not try it out now. The concept is simple. The input pins read a signal from either a digital or analog signal from a sensor. The logic interprets it through the software and it tells the output what to do with it. Now let's take a look at the pins on the Arduino. On the bottom right, you have six analog inputs, A0 through A5. Next to those where it's marked power, you have your VIN. You have two ground pins, 5 volt, 3.3 volts, a reset, and an I.O. reference pin. On the opposite side, you have 14 digital output pins, 0 through 13. The ones with the tilde are PWM, 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11. To the left of pin 13 is an extra ground. And you'll know this pin 0 and 1 has a TX and RX. Those are transmit and receive for your serial communications. The remaining pins, A, REF, SDA, and SCL, are beyond the scope of this discussion and will be discussed in a later video. On the left-hand side, you have two connectors. That shiny-looking rectangular one up on the top left is a USB connector. That's where you hook up your USB cable to your computer. On the bottom left is a barrel connector where you can get external power. Anywhere from 7 to 12 volts is recommended. 
but anything over 9 volts is dissipated through heat. So 9 is the recommended voltage for that barrel connector. And you could have both of them connected at the same time. You don't have to worry that you're going to blow things up if both of them are connected. There are four miniature LEDs on the board. Just next to the ground, next to pin 13, you can see an L. That is the pin that's connected to pin 13. And below that, you have the TX and RX. Whenever you have some serial communication, these will flicker. And over to the right, you'll see an on. That one will light up when you have power on your Arduino. Right above the USB connector, there is a reset button. If you press this, that will restart your sketch. Now that we've identified the most important components that we're going to be using on the Arduino, we'll save the rest of the discussion for another video or two. So in the meantime, let's take a closer look at some of the trains that we're running with my Arduino using DCC++ EX.